Welcome everybody to our first ever video iWhats with your hosts, Dr. Ian Dunbar, Kelly Dunbar, and me, Jamie Dunbar. What are we talking about today, Kelly? Today, um, I asked our uh, Twitter friends what they wanted to hear about, and one person suggested that we talk about the um, well, puppy, puppy, puppy temperament testing, the validity of puppy temperament testing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, maybe for me as a newbie, we can start by explaining what exactly is a puppy temperament test. Well, you take a bunch of puppies and you do things with them and then you score their behavior, and um, which is totally kosher, like things like how long does it take for the puppy to come up and you know make contact with you. Um, and that's cool, that's nice to look at because you find some puppies are scared, some aren't. But what is then crazy is they make these enormous sort of um, suggestions as to how this will make the dog act as an adult and there's just not a shred of evidence for it. There is literally not one study which has shown that these tests actually predict adult temperament. So people use them for, um, especially for working dogs, service dogs, they may do it for a pet dog uh, placement as well. Breeders might take the whole litter and test them all and then try to place them appropriately, you know, um, based on their personality and the outcome of this test with, you know, either a pet home with children versus one that doesn't have children versus somebody who wants a dog for sport or mm -hmm. wants a service dog, that kind of thing. That's how they kind of try to divvy up the puppies. All right. Well, this, this actually kind of reminds me of what uh, we talked about some on Dog Star Daily in terms of telling people before they get their puppy when they go visit a breeder or something to actively uh, kind of work with the different puppies there and see which ones are, you know, which ones come up to them, which ones take food, which ones uh, seem, you know, skittish or scared about different things. And uh, it seems like we tell people to, you know, utilize some of this information when they're making a decision about. Yes, and you're, you're absolutely right. I think what, what's different uh, or what's important to to highlight for people is that this is not an absolute be-all, end-all, you know, uh, assessment of what a dog's personality right. will be. I mean, the idea that at eight weeks or five weeks or six weeks, or they do tests at different times, usually around seven weeks is when they try to do it, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, seven weeks is kind of considered the optimum time to do this. The, the idea that at seven weeks that a, a puppy is is whole, complete, finished, and the personality is finished, when we know is, is silly, when we know that there is so much um, that still can be done in, right. as, far as, as far as influence your puppy's behavior and whatever their environment may be that will still affect what they're going to be. You're never going to get just this puppy in a, in a bubble that is, is the Yeah, yeah I, I think the, the, the difference is when people are looking for a puppy, you obviously want to get a puppy that likes you and he's friendly and he's confident and so on. That would be the smart choice. Don't get one that is fearful and unhouse trained uh, uh, and so on. Um, when we do it as a predictive tool though, it, I mean, it just doesn't work and, and I find this not without danger. I mean, essentially what a puppy test is, it's a slice, just a slice in the puppy's life, how this puppy acted today with this person. And the inherent danger to this is when you read the results of temperament tests, they say things like, puppy B was perfect. He ran up to me very quickly and sat. So the notion there is the owners think, oh, puppy B's perfect, no reason to train him. But then they say, puppy A is absolutely unsuitable to have as a pet because he ran up to me really fast, jumped up on my chest and bit my hands. Um, or puppy C is unsuitable as a pet because it never approached me at all, it was scared. And, and this I find really upsetting that you would have puppy A, for example, there's your perfect dog. He's got the best recall of the litter. He hits you before anyone else mid-chest. He acts like a perfect puppy. He's so happy to see you, he jumps up because no one's talking to sit yet. And, and he bites your hands, as all puppies should. Totally normal puppy, easy to train. And they're telling me he's not a suitable pet. But more upsetting for me is puppy C, who doesn't approach at all. And my notion is, okay, puppy C, you just failed the test. I tell you what, you're gonna retake it right now and you're going to retake it again and again and again until you pass the test. So the whole point is it shouldn't be puppy testing, it should be puppy temperament training. And it tells us how the puppy acts with us now, and if that ain't up to par, 
then we change it really quickly. We don't just discard puppies A and C. But then puppy B, we train him and make him even better. So I think the danger to me with this whole testing thing is it biases the notion of the development of behavior towards genes. People are saying genes are more important than this. Puppy's development is set in stone and we tested him at seven weeks. Therefore, at three years, he'll act like this. Total rubbish. What it does do is it basically tells people don't train. Don't train puppy B because he's perfect and don't train puppy A and C because it's a waste of time because they're freaks already. So that to me is the great danger of it. Yeah, that's not to say uh, that puppies don't have inherent personalities when they're oh, born. Of course they do. Of course they yes, do. Yes. And some of it is more malleable than others. I mm -hmm. mean, I would still say that if, if puppy A was the wild one that hit you in the chest, or I can't remember if that was A or B, um, that that might not, if somebody's looking for an agility prospect or some other kind of sport prospect, that puppy is probably more suitable than if you're a full shy puppy, C. At that moment, absolutely. At that moment, yeah. absolutely. And obviously training can help puppy C succeed in life in other ways or even in sport, but, you know, you. you not every puppy's going to like every activity. No, but the on the other the hand, say, say with puppy A, I don't want him just going into sport homes. You know, he, he may be very suitable in a pet home, but what they've got to do is train him sit before impact. And when better to start this training than when he's seven weeks old? So, so that's the importance of early testing. I'm totally for early testing. But the, the reason for early testing is so we can locate potential problems early on. So if the fearful puppy... He's fearful because he hasn't been socialized and he's seven weeks old and that's criminal. But at seven weeks, you know, we can change him. He will never be what he could be, but we can get him up to running speed you know, within the hour. Well, he'll basically. be all he could be. He won't be yeah. the same as puppy A or B. Perhaps. So your, your guys' concerns about um, puppy temperament testing now reminds me a lot about our concerns over what people think of um, when they think of breeds and how it can be a valuable tool um, and it can tell you some stuff, but the danger is giving it more importance than it has or, or thinking that it's the be all and end all. The it's absolute like, definitive you know, not every answer. Rottweiler is going to be aggressive and you know, not every, I don't know, Shih Tzu is going to be snappy. Um, there may be some tendencies and those may be very real you know, stereotypes that have some, some basis, but that's not an excuse to not train. Um, same with, you know, if you do a puppy temperament test and maybe one puppy one day was, you know, more approachable, that doesn't mean that, like you're saying, uh, that that puppy's set for life and is already a perfect puppy and doesn't need to be trained. You know, that's a valuable, you learn something, but... What do you do with that? Right, it's, it's not important. It's not the end of it. Yeah. You, you never, nothing you learn about a puppy is going to tell you that you don't need to train it. And nothing you learn about a puppy is going to tell you that you can't train it to be a, a good dog. You know? yeah. No, I think that's a very good analogy that too many people think all we have to do is select the right dog and it's over. And it doesn't matter what the breed or what the breeding, you can produce a stellar dog, an ambassador for that breed, or you can produce an absolute reject, which is so badly behaved you can't believe it. That happens right. in any breed. And, and I hope you notice I say you can produce not that the dog can grow up to be. Because it is, the biggest variable in a dog's personality and temperament is the owners it lives with. And the only yeah. variable that is changeable. Yeah, and, and this will you give know. you right. breed <laughs> stereotypes too. Like, um, it is true that a lot of little dogs be, are scared and become snappy, but that I don't think is inherently in their breed genetics. I think it's because little dogs are picked up a lot and held a lot and therefore don't get to meet other dogs on the ground as much as, say, a Labrador would. And so you get a lot of breed stereotypes that actually come from the owner's stereotype that would own a breed like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we get this, obviously, with pit bulls, and you mentioned right. rotties, that a lot of people who get pits and rotties want the dog to be a tough dog. And so it becomes a tough dog. You get the self-fulfilling prophecy, which you would also get Absolutely. with puppy A, B, and C. Yeah. If they were, I'm sure breeders will say, "Well, I see the correlation," but they're also placing the puppies based on what they, what they came up with. You see what I'm saying? So right, they're placing the a puppy, puppy in a sporty home, and it grew up to be a sporty dog. It's yes. not like, oh, your prediction was so great, you exactly. trained it That's to become saying. sporty. Or, or this one was shy. Well, if you didn't train it to do anything else, or not to be shy, it would become more confident. Right. And you know, that, that, would, that would continue, and then you place it in a home, in a quiet home with one little old lady, it's going to be a less socialized dog, yeah. and it will remain shy.
And so, I, I so think, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I think that's the most issues. important point to end on. That this is say, Here comes our mail. Well <laughs> Thank you, Claude. Maybe we'll be end. Maybe we will end sooner than we thought. But Claude, this thank you. A mail moment. Shush, please. I know it's the mailman. I know. And strange enough, we're right here. We know he's there. Yeah, this is very different. Good boy. Keep a grip. You're doing well. Good dog. Very good dog. <laughs> We're very good, sorry, just a moment, today. okay. Training, training as <laughs> training, it happens. Training and doing I was at the same thing. Anyway, I said I think that's a very important point to end on. The self-fulfilling prophecy of over-relying on a puppy temperament test or a breed stereotype. And if that's what you think, that's what's going to happen. And Claude agrees with me, so I think we'll say goodbye now. Good. Bye, thank you very much. I'm